Hopefully I haven't soured you too much on constraints. They actually have some good uses, and I hope to point those good uses out here for you. If you can look at this scenario, consider the scenario I've built here. I have a take a method that that uh, oops takes a t argument, and I've constrained t to be an i comparable. All right? Let me copy and paste this, and and I'm gonna rework this this method here. And instead of saying take a t, I'm just gonna say, hey, you know what? If t's got to be an i comparable. Let's put comparable as the argument, I comparable. All right, so what's the advantage of this over this? In fact, if you ask me, this this version is a little bit more readable. I don't have to deal with all the constraint and the generic stuff. Let's just, if it has to be an I comparable, let's require an I comparable. Well, there's a couple of advantages to doing the generic version. One is we can avoid boxing when T um, is a value type. If you remember from the value type videos that when you reference a value type or try to assign a value type object to uh, upcast it to a reference then it gets boxed and put out on the heap. Go see the value type videos if necessary brush up on that. Okay so when I when I say take a let's just go down here I'm gonna say take a let's take an int I'll be explicit here and define my generic type I'm gonna say take a five all right, well now t becomes int and boxing is no longer required here. Whereas if I didn't have that version, I had the non-generic version, well, this works fine because int is i comparable. I can type int here, hit f12, you can see that int32 implements i comparable. Okay, so yeah, I can say take a 5 and that goes to this, but but there's a boxing that occurs with this int um, being assigned to this arg. Okay, again, see the boxing videos if necessary. But there's also a, another advantage to having the generic version as well. Not just the r being able to avoid the boxing, but also consider, let's consider this class 1 up here. Say I say where t is i comparable, and let's also add another constraint where t is i enumerable. Alright, and then let's change this back to a t. Okay, there's no way for me, if I can copy and, oops, oh, it formatted it for me, how nice. Let's copy and paste. <clears throat> if I want to get rid of this T argument, it no longer works to say I, to say I comparable here, or I enumerable. I, I need both. I have to have both. I want both. Okay, so I can't, like, say I comparable, I enumerable. That doesn't work. Right, I can't put a comma between them or anything. Yada, yada, yada. The only way I can force my arg to be i comparable and i enumerable is to make it generic and then uh, constrain t to have both an i comparable and i enumerable. These are non related interfaces. They don't, i comparable doesn't implement i enumerable, nor does i enumerable implement i comparable. Okay, so, so at that point, there you go. Anyway, two good uses I've found for these constraints. The other ones, take them or leave them if you need them, they're there.